Corby, Northamptonshire. Since the closure of the steelworks in 1980, the population of Corby has declined. For those that remain, the poor employment prospects and the now half-empty housing estates are a fertile breeding ground for vandalism and despair. Kingswood School must simply cope with the consequences. But its resources are neither great nor growing. The education spending cuts, which at first could be restricted to an increasing but relatively unimportant decline in the fabric of the school, now begin to seep through the system. Although it has no fewer pupils, Kingswood must lose the equivalent of four full-time teachers over the next two years. To ease the pain, every department must make small economies, from the sixth form at one end to the remedial or individual learning department at the other. Every comprehensive school has its share of slow learners, those whose literacy and numeracy is below average. Most schools give them some special attention. For Frankie Braidwood, 12, this means that all his maths and English classes are spent in the individual learning department with the head of the department, Keith Smith. A P, a P falcon. Come on, we've done it. A P falcon. Per. A peregrine falcon. Peregrine, you want there? A peregrine is a kind of falcon. Do you oh. remember last week we saw all the different sorts of falcons, didn't we? We mm. saw the peregrine falcon and we saw the kestrel. Okay. And that's the peregrine. It's a, it's a type. A okay. Keith Smith is assisted by one part-time teacher and by the goodwill and unpaid work of other staff and sixth form pupils. But as the financial belt tightens, he'll be able to help fewer and fewer children. What else do they They've got to be bad to come in here these days. At one time, we used to take borderliners, as it were, and give them a boost, but we can't do that anymore. So we only take the bad ones now. Um, intellectually bad or, or, you know, some poor reading. It's very sad because we used to have kids here who we perhaps keep for a year and really push and push hard because they perhaps they get the attention that you can't get in, in a normal class of 30. And they were coming out at the end of the fifth year with a grade two CSE, which was an impossibility when they first came in. Uh, and whether you agree with an examination system or not, You've got to be part of it. I, I hate it, you know. I hate to, to think of these kids in terms of an exam. Mm. But I've got to be fair to them. You know, they, they've got to compete outside. Okay. The amount of Rachel Bell is 12. She's making good progress. Okay. Too good, perhaps. To make way for others, she must rejoin the mainstream of pupils next term. Do you remember talking last week? And I was saying I'm going to throw you out, and you said you didn't want to go. Have you changed your mind yet? No. <laughs> But what am I going to do next year, then? Because I think you ought to go, and I think you're going to stand a better chance, much, much, much better chance if you go. Wouldn't you like to give it a try? You will. Oh, you are lovely. You saved me a lot of work. Not English, though, because I don't Not like that English. teacher. <laughs> well, you don't know which teacher you're going to have. Oh. Do you? Hey, you have no idea which teacher you're going to have next year. Even I don't know that yet. You don't want which teacher? Mr. Hewitt. Oh, you worry about Mr. Hewitt. Everybody worries about Mr. Hewitt. He's lovely. He's not. <laughs> but you would do far better to go into ordinary English classes. And you'll get on ever so well. You know you will, don't you? It's an easy life down here, isn't it? Hey. So you're going to do that for me? Mm -hmm. You are good, aren't you? Hey, you're smashing. All right then, so you'll go and do your maths with your maths group and your English with your English group and you'll come back and see me in October and tell me how you're doing. You promise? Yeah. Good girl. OK, go on then. Rachel must now re-enter an environment that she still feels is hostile. I'm quite small for my age and... got short hair and I think... when I wear trousers, I think I look like a boy. Well, I think I'm quite miserable. 
because uh, hardly anybody likes me. Just got a few friends. I just think they hate me. Well, they do. They just say that I'm horrible. If I go and sit on a table where somebody is, they'll say you'll get away smelly belly or something like that, because most of them don't like me. But every table I go on, there's somebody on a table that don't like me. So I just go on a table where there's nobody's there. Well, if, if I did have a magic wand and I'd wave it, and I could do anything I'd like, I'd like to go to London for my life and live in there. Rachel keeps her insecurities to herself. Others don't. Frankie Braidwood displays his and is therefore more of a problem to the department and to the school. Frankie, go to my room. John Gemmell. Ian Cowley. Go down to my office, please. Now, where were you on Friday afternoon? Yes, we went out into the woods. You went out into the woods? Yes, it was. What for? Um, Mark, Mark and John says, um, well, John says, Julian, uh, do you want to miss the last lesson? So I said, I just said, yeah. Let's so we went out into the woods. And you just went out to miss that last lesson? Yes. That's an hour you've missed. Have you done this before? I miss. Are you sure? Yes. I've never done it ever, ever in my life. Just this once. Well, I shall make sure, Frankie, that you don't do it again this term, cos I'm going to put you on report. All three of you, in fact. And you'll carry it round with you to every lesson and have it signed by every member of staff that teaches you. Though no less able than Rachel, Frankie is unlikely to leave the individual learning department until he's less of a behaviour problem. I just want to do what my friends do. Just don't like being left out. My friends go along and do that, do some up. I'll do that. And I go around smashing windows, I'll do that. I just don't want to be left out. My sister had a new baby last week. I mean, from now on, I am going to change my attitude. I'm just going to be good. I'm not going to get into any more trouble. I just want to be... grow up and just be known. I don't want to grow up and just be known as a spiteful little terror, <laughs> like most people call me. I just want to be good and kind. I mean, deep down, I am good and kind, but higher up, I'm just horrible. I mean, with somebody like Frankie, I, I feel that if his reading matched up with his, his intelligence, as it were, then he probably wouldn't be half the behaviour problem that he is in, in the rest of the school. He'll always come up... I hope he will. He'll always come up... Um, happy and bouncy. It's a question of really, of keeping him on an equilibrium so he doesn't get on the wrong side of the law. Because once he gets on the wrong side of the law, then I think we shall lose him. Keith Smith's assistant, Lillian Mathy, raises money each year by private donation to take underprivileged children away for a week's holiday. Not surprisingly, many of them are in the individual learning department, and both Frankie and Rachel will be on this year's trip. It's an adventure centre run by the Youth Hostels Association. Uh, the, the, the part of the, the centre that we're going to is, is fairly new, uh, and uh, therefore it's modern. It's uh, sort of carpeted throughout, and uh, there are uh, showers. There are staff at the centre that will look after the children. Uh, they'll cook their meals for them. And he is looking forward to going. You know, I keep threatening him, if you don't behave, you're not going. But he'll go anyway, and he knows it. He knows he can get round me, no matter what he does. They'll be able to go and do some uh, canoeing. There's a uh, horse riding. She's a bit excited in going, which is only natural. <laughs> Never been away before. Only on day trips, that's all, but not for four or five days.
Rachel lives in the Corby Refuge, a hostel for battered wives. She shares a room with her mother, her sister, and her three brothers. Well, I came from Nottingham. Uh, I left my husband um, through, well, mental cruelty, not. He was being a bit cruel towards Rachel and this and that. And I've got five children, including Rachel. She's been a lot better off since she's been here. I mean, he was a bit cruel to her at times. He used to just grab hold of her leg, you know, and dig his fingers in and really bruise her. And I reported him to the social services and they came up. I don't know whether the police charged him with it or what, but uh, I had a, a police woman come to the refuge in Telford to question me and question Rachel, so whether they charged him again with it, I don't know. But I've never heard nothing from him since I came here. It's just fine now since I've come here. You know, I've got no problems with her. She'll go to school. She's a regular school gather. She doesn't have much time off unless she has to go to dentist, anything like that. And how are you feeling about a week without? Well, we're a bit peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> she can be a bit noisy at times, you know. Uh, I think I'm Mr. Fair enough, sure she's never been away from me before. Yeah. So I think she'll be happy. Frankie, too, once lived in the refuge. But his mother remarried, and he and his sisters now live with their mother and stepfather on the Lincoln estate. You better have a wash with me, Papa. OK. <laughs> well, his dad used to hit me and knock me about. And then it's come to it that he was knocking the children about. More so Frank, because he was the boy. In what way, badly? Oh, very badly, yeah. And, um, I mean, Frank, he still bears the scars now of what his father's done. I mean, he was only three or four years old when he'd done that. What, what was that? <clears throat> the, uh, the little girl, Patricia, the middle one, he told her to get Frank on the floor one day. Just, he was laying down flat on the floor to sit on her, his shoulders like so, so he couldn't move. And dropped an iron on his head. Lucky enough. I just managed to catch the handle of the iron, but the point of the iron went into his forehead. He's had glasses thrown at him. I don't know what he hasn't had thrown at him. You know, and the scars are still there, and they always will be there. And he wakes up crying at night. And a couple of times I've found him actually sleepwalking. You know, and he's, he's woke up screaming. And I said to him, what's wrong? Daddy's coming to get me. I say, no, you know, don't be silly. But for, you know, a kid at that age, I mean, I'm not going to forget what he done to me. And I'm sure those kids are not going to forget. Well, I'm glad he is going on it. Um, well, for the fact that he's, if he wasn't going on it, we, he wouldn't be going away anyway, you know, because we couldn't afford to take him. Plus the fact, you know, with him being away, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to get rid of him. But it'll give me time to adjust, you know, back to myself again, just for a couple of days anyway, you know. I'm not worrying where Frank is, what he's doing. Just think, what will we do right now? Yeah, yeah think about it! Is. Oh, it's it's think about it. This year's trip to Wales is entirely funded by charity. Lillian Matthew has had to hire the school minibus, but has persuaded the Corby Scouts to lend theirs. Just look at the waterfall. Hey, you. There you are. You'll see it go right out to sea. As far as the eye could see. Now, how about that? That's good. That's it. That's it. You need a And who's not seen the sea before? Me. You haven't seen the sea before, Frankie. Now, let me tell you, Frankie, that is the actual sea. Oh, oh, I'm going to try Rachel to attend, so then let us just float. Oh, oh we're we'll sitting up between. Oh, 
Oh. Did you know there was so much water? No. No? No, that's in a front. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because we're watching that as well, yes. Now, we're here now, and this place, yes, is Shambedra. To the round. Here we are. Here we are. That's it. Girls, if you go in the room just there. That's right, in you go, yes. Get yourselves by. In there. And all the boys this way. Oh, there we go. The, the, the ladies is there, look. You've been down for the ladies. I want to go in all. Well, it's just across there. Now. Uh, don't go, be, don't. Uh, no, I've got to get my coat out. I've got it. <laughs> I've got to then we know where they are. That's good. Oh, Yours my... on there. Yeah. Is that Where's right? Mine, sir? Yeah, right. Underneath here. Or on there. Mind your head. Mind your foot. Yes. Get down there. Here I come. Scum. Oh, oh yes. Right, yes. thanks very much. Stony. What do you think? Yeah. Get, get the edges hey. and pin it up like that. Oh, well, I don't. It's not me. Can I just do some merch? Set. I'm all set for the winter. <laughs> We regard it as part of the individual learning department's function in the school that if we can, we will take some of the children away each year. And we try to choose the ones that we think might benefit the most. Really, what we're trying to do is say, well, look, we think the five days away from Corby, away from home, perhaps, away from the school environment, um, to see us in a different light might be of value to them, and it might carry over into the work that they're doing at school. Oh, look, I've picked that off. Look, it's hurt, it. <laughs> the red gunge? I don't know what it is. Let's go have a look. Oh. Whereabouts? You're braver than I am, girl. That green, well, it'd be in, I don't know, it's a seaweed of some sort. Wait, no, like, yeah, yeah, oh, that would be um, oh, a jellyfish. Rachel, look. How they run sideways, look. It's a woof, woof. How they run sideways. Come on. Yeah. Do you want it? Oh, oh, it's um, a red anemone. Look, see that? You he tuck, he'd be touching his clothes off. Look at all his little legs on it. Hey, look. look. Yeah. Thanks very much. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's no use saying, please, may I, if the answer's no, whatever you say. I've given you instructions, that's what you've got to do now. Thank you, right. yeah, I'll brush your teeth first. Yes. You're brushing your teeth first, good. Well, there's, there's two sinks there and a toilet. Hey, watch me, 
Jenny? Yeah. Where's Jenny gone? Doris. Where are they? I don't know. No, but they're not in here. Not in here. Not in here. Not in here. Any more? Can I? Well, uh, count them for me. One, two, yeah. let me. One. <laughs> one. Oh, that's She's only one, two. Jenny, 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 you're thinking that and well, not the last bit here. Here's you. Here's Moira. You. I'm not going to bed. Oh, no, we're all going to bed I'm now. Have you given me a Hold on, a two, I want two. Yeah, right, go. Right. Right. Yeah. Come on. Right. 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 And now look here, any misbehaviour, and I shall come down to kiss you all goodnight. Oh my God. <laughs> miss, I'm begging, Miss. I'm begging. Good lad, Frankie. I'm not wearing now, I'm getting good. <laughs> I'm going to give you five minutes. Five minutes. Oh. Then there's your charmers. Well, it hasn't cleaned it. Quick, dig some <laughs> and toothbrushes that fit into pots and all sorts. Good Fantastic. I know, skills. Look. You open your quilt out. Your quilt has been folded in half, and you open it out. No, no. Oh, and you're laying it on. You, no, you lay underneath it, not in it. I'm what sure. time do you want waking up? Seven o'clock! Seven o'clock! Six o'clock! So I'll tell you what, what, if anybody wakes eight. me up too early, we're going to run. Half eight. A run. <laughs> no, up and over the, the hills. Oh, you're going up that. There's no need to tread all over him. No pillow fights, you heard what Andy said. Right, you lucky. No, please, I'm not lucky. No, don't leave. leave. Hey, it's a penny! <laughs> if at the back of the mind I think, oh, I've got to go back to school or, or I've got to sit down every night and write about this and write about that, I mean, it's going to turn them off. I mean, you, you, you know what it's like. I mean, they drove along the motorway and said, look, we're in Wales. And what did he say? Walsall. Now, what's the point in trying to get those kids to write about it tonight? Let them feel it, let them enjoy it, let them experience it. I mean, we look for the minimum in success with these kids. I mean, you're only going to get a little bit, but if it's just a tiny bit, it's something to build on. If one child has never been to the sea before and has been this once and he doesn't go again in the next five years while he's at school or with until he gets married, he'll perhaps remember when he's got his own children. I went to the seaside with Kingswood. I must take my children because I thoroughly enjoyed it. He will remember. Now, if, if, will. if that's happened, then that's enough. You know, and on the beach tonight, I mean, that's worth the whole journey and the whole week because every child was fascinated with what he could see, either jumping over the rocks, falling in the water, getting thoroughly wet, feeling how cold it was, playing with the spray, looking at the shells. All this absolutely fascinated them. And even if they go with the parents, they find these things and they've got nobody to talk to them about. I'm not saying all the parents, but some of the parents, they'll wander off, the kids will wander off and say, what's this? But they've got somebody to relate to. One of us is, was available to say, great, you found that. I think it's this. Can any of you ride? Yes. I can't move my arm. I said I am. Well, I don't want to I'm pretty good at all oh, this. Can I go on that one, please? Oh, in a minute, oh, in a minute. Rachel. Now, who are the other children? Yes, you'll have to be. Oh, fancy coming in shoes like that. Wait a minute. Oh. Sam. Um, no, it's a little one. Oh, Sam. Sam little. You. Go <laughs> oh, on, then. If you've got your heart set on Sam, you go and have that little black oh, and white pony, yours. but you don't get on until oh, I ask you to get, get on. on. Oh, you go and stand. Hang on, Sam. 
You can go on Queen, these are little dampers. Oh, yes. Do you want to swap? No. Nah. Right, pull yourself on. Up. Oh, that's a good girl. There you go. Now let your leg dangle free. Let it dangle. Does that feel comfy? Yes. Let that one out the stirrup. Let it dangle free. OK. Shall I get on? Yeah, put your left leg in the stirrup and your right leg over the saddle. That's it. Now sit there with your legs down straight. Just you up right, put your foot in there. Just the front of your foot in, all right? Okay. You've been on before, haven't you? Yeah, just once. I'm all scared then. Oh god. <laughs> as long as they don't bend the head all the way down, I am not I'm not scared of it. You can... This is Queenie. Queenie? Mm-hmm. Right, now. was the setting for a costume. That's it, that's it, let's have a What's that one say? Uh, reproductions. Reproductions of the hang no, no, no. in men, many a well too. No! No, hurry up! She's trying to make a noise! The breeding cows are rear, rearing. Rear, rearing already. Early. Early. Spring. Born calves which will be sold in the autumn with land. Calf capable. 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 them for beef. beef. Yes. Uh, well, it does say there that they should, they should be black cattle because the, the, uh, the black cattle, they Good produce, chicken. they have them around here because they're very hardy. So you can imagine in the winter, it's very, very uh, uh, rough conditions here. They're very hardy and they produce a lot of milk and they produce a lot of beef. Come back. Open eyes up and see if we see some Welsh black cattle. Don't drop any paper. There's any paper here, we know it's you that's dropped it. Thank you. Just in case you ask. No, no. Right, I'll leave the girls alone. Who? Jenny. All right, don't tell us who. Once who? I can hear her crying. if you went back to the centre. Mm. 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 Come on. <coughs> Come on. If we turn back, eh? Yes? Don't want to go! <laughs> what would you like to do, then, eh? Once we got, once we got back to, to the, um, the ranch, 
Make a nice cup of tea. Then you'll feel better, eh? Hey? I want my dad. I want my mum. <laughs> Come on. You'll feel like that at the minute. <laughs> like that, you know. You're not the only one. You're all right. Come on. Got Dear Mum, I have missed you very much. I hope you are OK and I am having a nice time here. I am all right. I love you very much. Love from Jenny. Dear Mum and George and family, I am having a nice time here. I have got £8.26 left. I have been on horses. Love, Rachel Bell. Dear Mum and Dad and kids, I am having a smashing time in Wales. I went horse riding today. The beach is smashing, so is the dinner. P.S. See you on Friday. Lots of love, Frankie. You mustn't bathe when the tide's going out. Let's go! It's freezing! <laughs> oh, God. Oh. What the hell am I doing this for? I must be mad, you know, there must be easy ways of earning a living. But I think overall, at the end of a year, I'm, no, I, I, would, I wouldn't change my job for any other one in the school. I could never see the point in, in being in school and not actually working with kids. And when it comes to working with kids, then, you know, you should be doing it the whole of the time. I love, just love going off on my own. When I'm in a great big massive open space, like the sea, I just tend to just walk away on, off my own. Sometimes I think about nothing. Sometimes I tend to think about my first dad. Sometimes, most of the time, I just don't think of anything. To be honest, I don't like men I think they're rotten. I don't like them because I remember my brother's dad. He was violent and he was nasty. He was just horrible to us. But some men I see are nice.
Imagine yourself as soldiers now, and you're on guard duty. And you've got to patrol all the way around there and keep an eye open for the attacking natives. You've got to decide which way you think they'll come. Yes, yeah, it'd be a good idea. They could look down. Because they could head that way and just shoot down. They'd shoot down. Yes, They'll sir. They come by British Rail. They come by British Rail. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, the trains are always late, Frankie. Yes, Get back up there. No! Hiya! Look! 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 Chilly! I should have a rest or something tonight. Who sleeps tonight? I bet. I'm just worn to a frazzle. Do you think you'll make the barbecue? We don't know. We don't know. You just had enough. Hey. It's spending all that money. So what does it, you know? It's hard work spending money all day, isn't it? Did you spend everything you've got this morning? Yeah, on presents. On presents. Oh, yes, you showed me some of them, didn't you? You had the red purse. My red... sister. That's for your sister. That's right. Did you take all your wet clothes off? Are you wet? Do you think you've got a cold? Yeah, I've got a cold, don't I? You got a cold, you think, did you? Did you get all your wet clothes off when you got in? Yeah. Oh, good. Said well then, now just walk sensibly. Where are you going, sir? At your age. You're going over there if you could make your way there. The last night, and a party shared with other children visiting the area, including some from a school for the mentally handicapped. My auntie, she went to market and she bought a left-handed gramophone that went like that. Would you like to help? Rachel, my it. granny went to market. <laughs> <laughs> my granny went to market and put left-handed microphone workers. <laughs> 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 my aunt went to market and bought a left-handed microphone that goes like that. My well, left-handed. <laughs> <laughs> my grandma went to market and bought a microphone that went like this. That's right. Okay. <laughs> went to market, left-handed gramophone that went like that. A right-handed fan that went like that, and a fixed-wheel bicycle that went like that. <laughs> My granny went to market and brought a left-handed gramophone that goes like this, a right-handed fan that goes like this, and a bicycle. Fixed-wheel bicycle. Fixed-wheel bicycle goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> A bicycle that went like that, a nodding doll that went like that, a clock that went cuckoo, and a hula hula girl. <laughs> Left-handed gramophone, a fan what goes like this, a two-wheel fixed motorbike, I mean bike, and a nodding dog what goes like this, a car what goes <laughs> and a what else? <laughs> 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 A two-wheel bicycle, a doll's, a doll's head, a clock that goes cuckoo and a hula hoop. My uh, granny went to the market, she bought a left and a round fan record player, a fan that goes like this, and not in doll. <laughs> it's good, 
Died of exhaustion. <laughs> Frankie's very difficult. I'm I'm very frightened for Frankie. Um, I think I'm I'm quite certain he's enjoyed himself this week. Um, at times he's been a nuisance, but then he always is a nuisance in in that that he can't conform to behaviour. Um, he's always got to be attention seeking, which he's maintained all this week. <coughs> yeah. But there have been certain points in the week when you felt, oh, Frankie, that's great. The, the, his experience of the sea, I think that to me was worth everything for Frankie. Him seeing the sea and realising the vastness of the sea. And if you notice when we took him on the beach, he just literally galloped. The galloping movement and the, 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 the yeah, wonder and the expression a... of him charging up yeah. and down. Up and I down, think up and down. Uh, he, that's the only way he could express what he'd seen. I mean, really, we could do with it another week for Frankie to, to do something about, about certain areas of, of his behaviour. I mean, Rachel, mm -hmm. <laughs> Rachel was very pushy yeah. <laughs> in yeah, all yeah. respects. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. She's. Uh, <clears throat> a hefty girl. Although she's only small, she's a hefty girl, mm -hmm. and she uses her weight physically. Mm. She's a survivor. Yes. But she all automatically takes charge, mm. and she will find the weaker child, and she will dominate. I mean, she's a very dominant character, and, and she'll find it easy to dominate people. Mm. Although she isn't, you know, sort of highly intelligent, she, she's still um, eloquent. In her terms, mm. within within her peer group, she, she's very eloquent and, and she can very easily be a leader and not a good leader. Home, the situation is that they're all living in one room and we've alleviated the situation there for just a few days that there's a little more peace and quiet. I imagine Rachel's voice must grate at times at home because it certainly grates at times here because she's, she's a very demanding girl and she wants immediate attention. Um, and we've made sure she hasn't got immediate attention. If we're talking to somebody else, then she's had to wait. It's the same with Frankie. I feel very sure that his mother and father will have benefited very much from uh, Frankie being away from them for a week. I mean, he's, he is he is a, a great problem between the two of them. He's a friction between the, the, the stepfather and his mother. And he's, he is a source of worry and a mm. source of problem. And that, is, uh, uh, that has been taken away from them for a week. We, we, we're not sure whether we've achieved anything or not. We would, we would hope that we have, in as much um, that when we go back to school, we shall follow up the work that we've done here, although we've done no written work, which would put an uh, immediate stop on the holiday. And I'm sure somewhere along the line, we've achieved a little bit for each child. Oh, 